So I talked about R.J. Barrett about four months ago, and I think that's a pretty good gap to talk about him again, especially because of uh, circumstances about the NBA not happening at the moment. So uh, to me, the most important things with R.J. Barrett, besides the Knicks surrounding him with talent, and we'll get to that, is his aggressiveness attacking the rim, and then his development as a playmaker and a defender. Because that, to me, is what can really separate him. Because there's not a lot of wings at his size of 6'7", who can go off the dribble the way he can. He's listed at 6'6", but he looks 6'7 when I'm watching him. A good-sized wing who can go off the dribble, right? And when you look at his actual assists per game, it's not very high. It's 2.5 a a game, and if you go down his, uh, his game logs... There, there, there are a few games in there of some, some high assist uh, performances. And when you actually look at his highlights and you just see some of the passes that Barrett pulls off in traffic, whether it's a lob to Mitchell Robinson or just a, a pass into traffic for Julius Randle or Taj Gibson or whoever, I just think there's something there. I think R.J. Barrett's ceiling as a passer is pretty high. I'm saying... If the Knicks give him the spacing and they let him work off the dribble, I think he can be one of the best passing wings in the league. I mean, you look at it kind of similarly to, let's say, Kevin Durant, where KD, I mean, what is he up to now? I think KD is now up to like five assists a game or so. Yeah, like KD has been up to five assists since 25 years old. Granted, he creates a lot more spacing than Barrett, I understand that, but I could picture Barrett on a similar trajectory, where by the midpoint of his career, maybe a little earlier than that, um, he's just going off the dribble and making plays and acting as a second point guard, or maybe at times the actual point guard for the Knicks. I think that's something I brought up before, the idea of maybe Barrett could play point guard. I mean... The draft will, of course, be very interesting for the Knicks and who they choose to go with. Uh, Apparently, it's not a strong draft, but even so, there's always going to be good players. And if not that, they could get someone in free agency. But, uh, you know, we've seen times where teams struggling to find a lead ball handler have just given it to their young player who can do stuff. Uh, We saw it with Giannis one year with the Bucks. We saw it with Justice Winslow, of course, with Miami. And I wouldn't rule it out happening with the Knicks with R.J. Barrett. So that's the first thing. But the next thing is for for R.J. to really be an effective enough playmaker is he's got to be just going to the rim all the time, you know? A lot of free throws and and all that type of stuff. Pick and rolls, isos, some help with handoff plays. If the Knicks could get a decent coach along the way, that would be great, of course. The problem is the personnel around R.J. is not good for him attacking. I mean, if I look at the lineups he's played in this year, it's he's playing with Taj Gibson and Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson and Alfred Payton and Mo Harkless and this is not a lot of shooting. I mean, come on, you you, you can't put RJ out there with dudes who are going to clog the paint and guards who can't make shots. So the Knicks could probably use Kind of like an entire roster reconstruction next season. I mean, Julius Randle, I don't think he's a good fit for this team. I'll just say it. I think he, in the right situation, can be a good player. And, you know, he can still have some box score performances. But I don't think the Knicks go anywhere with Julius Randle giving them 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. I do think they go somewhere with R.J. Barrett hitting a ceiling, and I don't think he can do that with Randall here unless Randall is playing center with no other big. But then that makes it complicated because you got Mitchell Robinson. I mean, maybe you just split the minutes between those two, you know, basically about 24 for each. But there's a chance that you wouldn't be giving Mitchell Robinson enough room for him to improve because he hasn't hit his ceiling. And I also don't know if Randall would like that, and I don't know. I, I think that's, a, in a perfect world, that could be the thing, but I don't know if that's actually possible to do. Um, but I don't think RJ can be his best with two bigs on the floor who are not going to shoot from three. Well, even then, Randall will shoot from three, but he's not good from outside. So 
I think they gotta figure something out there. Now in a perfect world it would be Perzingis and RJ as the one-two duo and that would be a perfect fit, but the Knicks, of course, the moment Perzingis voiced his displeasure, they were like, yeah, alright, fine, we'll trade you. So, yeah. And the return on that move is looking really bad so far. Now, luckily for the Knicks, because they have so many team option or early termination guys or whatever, they can get a lot of cap space this season, and there's quite a few dudes who can make a shot in free agency. Between Gallo and Bogdan and Van Fleet and even like a placeholder point guard like Dragic or Fournier or Bertans, Joe Harris... There's a lot of dudes who can space the floor out, and I think the Knicks should definitely consider taking some of them on. I did just talk about their rumored Chris Paul thing recently, so I don't want to dive too much into their assets and all that, because I'll just be repeating myself. But they've got some stuff. they got picks and stuff like that. They can have a pretty big roster uh, shakeup this offseason. And I think, you know, if a star is out there, okay, you think about it, but... The priority to me is really just open the floor up for R.J. Barrett and let this guy drive to the rim and roll and all that. If I talk about his defense and his shooting now, his shooting, I mean, it's not terrible for a guy in his rookie season. I mean, his, his jumper is pretty stiff, but he looks like he's actually practiced threes before, so that's nice. I mean... 32% on three and a half threes a game, 61% free throws. Like, okay, you can work with that, assuming your form isn't terrible, and I don't think his form is terrible. And as far as his defense, I think R.J. Barrett's defensive ceiling is very high, to be honest. I think he can be uh, one of the better defensive wings. I mean, he's athletic, he's strong, 6'6", 6'7", whatever, 6'10", wingspan. Big thing with R.J., though, is he's got a want to be great defensively because that was a question right about college it's well how into the game is RJ or does he kind of just flow from basket to basket and they just does he pull an Andrew Wiggins I guess that would be a way to look at it and I guess that's kind of the best case worst case scenario for Barrett I think on the high end he could be like Jimmy Butler you know a lot of free throws, rebounding, passing, big wing who can make plays. Not a great three-point shooter, but you still have to care about him enough from out there, you know? But you'll dare him to take him a little bit. And I think the low end is Andrew Wiggins. It's this wing who you think can do a lot of things, but then you're actually watching him out there, and it's like, well, he can kind of shoot, but he can't really shoot. And, well, he can kind of finish, but he doesn't get there enough, and... Well, he can make a couple nice plays, but he doesn't consistently do it. So I guess that's the low end and the high end on Barrett for me. Wiggins or Jimmy Butler. What would the in-between of that be? Maybe like Harrison Barnes or uh, like Blazers, Nicholas Batum. You know, guy who just does a little bit of everything, but caps out at about 16, 17 a game. I think another interesting comparison based on their rookie seasons, is Brandon Ingram. You know, wing, talented, but kind of an awkward start because the team around him isn't great or whatever else. Uh, Perhaps Barrett is on that kind of a trajectory. We'll have to see. But hopefully the Knicks surround him with the shooting that that he could really need. And again, I, I would not be shocked if he ended up being their point guard.